Hey guys, Brent Holt, talking today about pediments. <laughs> a classical element. I did a video on the plinth blocks. It was very popular. People appreciate it and understand the history. I wanna do one on pediments because it's something I see people screwing up a lot. There's a lot of tricks. There's one special trick I'm gonna show you in this video. Come join me. The pediment, okay, goes back to that classical Greek and Roman architecture where the temple was very important. So the pediment was the side that people entered on, okay? So it was a very important for presentation and the pediment as it kicks up, okay, ended up being something that was very important. Now, if you go back to classical era and even to the 1800s in, in Britain, there's the British Museum. In the pediment of the British Museum, the inside of the pediment is called the tympanum. It's a very important thing. And just like over the Parthenon in Greece, the tympanum has a scene in there, okay? Now, the British Museum is about learning. So what you have on the far left side as you're facing it is a guy crawling out from under a rock. He begins to learn and the, he learns from the science and arts and knowledge and technology. And then he goes down the other side and he is teaching and training. So you have a story there, a narrative there. So uh, I'm telling you all that because the pediment is a very important element classically. Now, it is used and even overused throughout time since then, okay? In the Roman times they used it, in the Renaissance they used it, in the Enlightenment, in the classical period, in colonial America, all the way up to the present. Now, what's happened is, is we've kind of forgotten how to build them, okay? And so there are manufacturers that are selling pediments right now, and they're wrong, right? And so this video is about some quick ways to understand how to build a pediment. First of all, the pitch, okay? And so when we have a pediment, you know, is that right? Is that right? Or is that right? If you look just at classical, the Parthenon, things like that, this, this uh, radius is about 22 and a half degrees. There are, there are examples in Rome of 30 degrees, and then there are things that are 45 degrees. The classical, classical, classical right way of doing it is this 22 and a half degree one. It looks the prettiest. The problem is, is you get taller things, it ends up looking like that isosceles triangle, the equal sides all the way around, and it just looks a little bit funny. Our mind naturally is attracted to this kind of more typical traditional things. Now realize the reason why you have this variation is snow loads, okay? Realize that the reason roofs are flat or flatter in Italy than they are in Northern France is because of snow loads. The reason Tudor houses have such a steep pitch is because they were trying to manage snow and so snow didn't collapse the house, right? They didn't have snow in Italy, so they didn't have to have roofs as steep a pitch. So some of this has to do with building traditions, right? Today, if you're just trying to build a classical pediment over a doorway, this 22 and a half degrees is the one I would recommend. There are some, some rules as far as doing this that Vitruvius, right, that early Roman author who wrote the 10 books of architecture, he had a scheme. And then in the 16th century, a guy named Serlio had a scheme. Vitruvius is, was, if I have a, an, an opening over a door, and let's say there's my, cor there's my cornice, there's my frieze, there's my architrave, right? And so this point going up is my widest point. And I go over here and let's just say it's nine foot, okay? And I chose nine foot because he would break it into nine parts where this would go nine parts. And then you would take one part and go up and that determined the lowest molding of your pediment, right? So there was a proportional relationship of one to nine that determined the height of your, uh, of your pediment so that everything else could be built nine parts, one part high to the lowest part of the molding, and that was one way. Serlio's way of doing it was to take the, the center line, okay? You would take this, this dimension, that's this width, and you would, you would scribe a line, right? So this is scribed over here, right? It'd be the same on this side, right? This point right here determined the height, and so what you do is you'd measure from this outside point with your compass, and you would run that across and that would determine the height, right? So you do the same thing here, that, that establishes the top of your pediment. Now, 
Both of those help you realize that there is a geometric and mathematical proportion that goes along with these, that you are taking radiuses of, of different sections and different parts and pieces to determine the heights of other things. Remember, in one of my videos, I talk about regulating lines, right? That there are lines that you, when you walk up to an old house, and you go, I don't know why I like it, but I like it. Sometimes in the classical period, certainly there were regulating lines, meaning that there is a relationship between the different parts and pieces so that it looks right and it feels right because there is a geometric relationship going on here that makes us feel comfortable and makes us like it. OK, realize by looking at the past, there's tons of examples of great things we can look at and they did it better in the past. One of the things I see as I look at the old books and as I study historic things is that there was a ton of different types of pediments and the way that you would cut moldings, the ways that you would express the columns and all the different pieces. There's a number of different types of pediments. There's arch pediments, there's broken pediments, there's pediments that have different moldings and different stuff going on in them. They're quite wonderful. I was in Italy in Florence. If you ever go there, there's a ton of great examples. But Michelangelo, who was an architect, his he has some beautiful pediments that are, are arched and they break up. They do things with the eye that you won't believe. And so realize that, guys, it isn't just a matter of finding that height and width and making your pediment. There are some tricks and variety that by looking at the past, you can really be inspired and see a bunch of fun stuff. What happens with the pediment, a lot of times people can't figure out what's going on with all the different moldings, is you are taking your cornice and you are just pitching it up, okay? So you're not inventing new rules here or new moldings here that aren't already expressed here. And so if we have a cymation, right? And then we have a corona, you know, your drip, drip edge, you have a bed mold down here, right? And then your freeze is down here, right? This cornice that runs across, right, that same cornice that we've already played with is just pitching up, okay? So the moldings here are this collection of moldings because we've just pitched up. And this is the real trick, guys. It's called a split fillet. <laughs> if you can remember the split fillet, that is your pivot point. And essentially what happens is in your cymation, okay, if I did a big cymation, there's my cymation, there's my molding, right? See it? This is called a fillet. Now, if you look at the language, the, the, if I remember the, the molding palette, right? One of those moldings is called a fillet, okay? It can either be sunk in or it can be raised out. In this case, if I was gonna describe this as a cymorecta and a cavetto, this part would be a fillet, right? I can break out a classical moldings and talk about all the different parts and pieces because they're all named, right? This is the point that you are gonna pivot from that's gonna go up. OK, remember, as you put all these moldings together and you try to figure this out, that split fillet is a really key detail to getting it right. I can show you countless examples at Poplar Forest with Thomas Jefferson, winter tour in the Charleston Room at Philadelphia Hall. There is countless examples of the classical pediment broken and otherwise, arched and otherwise, that are always pitched at that split fillet. What's happening is this is breaking across here, okay? So the cavetto is gonna go across here, this and our, my bed mold is all gonna go across. The one molding that isn't gonna go across is the top of that cymation. You're gonna see this slide that's gonna show you where the cymation, corona, and bed mold all come from. The cymation was thought to be a gutter, okay? So if we look back at this classical architecture, this gutter is running up here. It wouldn't run across here because on this lower part of the pediment, right, because the rain's already caught up here, you don't need it down there. So it's thought that that's why that, that molding doesn't run across there. So the lower part, that cavetto, where it splits, this runs across the top, and that's what you'll see in the classical pictures, and this runs up. If we, if we look at this example, okay, essentially what's happened is, is one, the parts and pieces aren't there. We can just know that from studying the parts and pieces and then looking at this, at this example that the parts and pieces aren't there, right? There is no architrave and frieze that goes across there. We just have a cornice. By just having a cornice that sits on your door casing, it makes it look thin. It makes it doesn't look as substantial, doesn't make it look as rich, okay? 
And adding the architrave and the freeze over there, as I've shown you in my other videos, the architrave is your door casing. So there's no reason there shouldn't be a door casing running across that door. You at least put the architrave in. And then the freeze is oftentimes just a flat board. So it's not like the complexity of it was, was there. It's just understanding the parts and pieces. Now, if we break down the cornice, the actual cornice that they built, they have a small bed mold, they have a, a, a small cornice, and then they have, they have a crown, okay? They have some of the parts there. They're not expressed beautifully, but they're, but they're still there. And then they run this straight across the door, okay? And then they ignore the connection here, and they do the same thing up here, okay? which isn't terrible, right? No one's gonna die because of this. We're not sacrificing children here. We're just talking about getting things right and why something doesn't look right. And sometimes these things come from manufacturers. Realize, guys, that a lot of these rules are so forgotten, if you try to buy a pediment online, you might be buying the wrong thing. So you have to be careful. On this one, they, they apparently have put in the freeze. There's a small freeze that runs across there, no architrave. They're sitting on mini columns, but the entablature isn't very well expressed. But notice the, that there isn't really this organization of bed mold corona cymation. It's really just they have a crown molding, okay? And then they run that crown molding straight across the top, and then they run another crown molding coming down on top of it. There's no connection here. And I'm going to show you in my next video when we go out to actually build one of these things, how the split fillet really comes together and why it works and why it's beautiful. But ignoring the split fillet and just putting moldings on top of moldings might work on the drive-by, right? Might work on the, the quick glance, but it isn't really beautiful. It isn't really captured as well as it could be. And I like this example because the, the arched pediment, right, when a pediment, instead of being a triangle, is actually arched, okay, is actually really beautiful. And what they've done here is they've run a large molding across the top, and then they've separated it and put another arch over top. They do this because they don't want to get into the connections that are happening right here. And if you look at that molding, the flat molding that goes across the top, it is really a, a big molding, okay? And the scale, okay, or the proportion of this molding compared to the other moldings is too big. And so there's a freeze, that flat board that runs across the top is there. There's no architrave. The organization of the cornice isn't bed mold corona cymation is just molding it's just a crown molding like a cymation that runs across the top right and so i'm hoping you're kind of recognizing what's going on here and why this doesn't look as beautiful right or as well composed as a classical pediment if you understand the pediment and you get it and you're you're a rock star and you know everything i'd like to challenge you with two other masterful pediments, both being in Florence. If you go to the Sfuzzi Museum or you go to the Laurentian Library, which is a Michelangelo building, you'll find both of these pediments. So look at this, this first one. It's a reversed pediment, right? I mean, talk about skills in order to execute this in, the, in a proper way, right? That figure at the top there actually reintroduces the top of the of the triangle of a pediment of an invisible pediment there are regulating lines there that control this 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 co composition this is a masterful okay masterful don't try this at home kind of kind of pediment that if you want to really push yourself and really build something special this would be one goal the other one is this beautiful pediment at the Laurentian Library by Michelangelo Notice that it is a stone uh, pediment, but it has a triangle pediment and an arch pediment over top of it. Whoa, okay? I have tried to dissect this thing, try to draw it, try to figure out how to do it. Still can't get my mind completely around it. These are two elevated, beautiful pediments that if you wanna raise the bar, raise your game, there are some challenges out there that I'd like you to try. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Hull Millwork, Hull Homes. Sign up for the newsletter. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.